Hi, I'm Peter Bois, and my STEM-infused magic show, Engineering Wonder, I make a simple DC motor with just a battery, a couple of paper clips, a magnet, and some copper wire. And I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. This is a DC motor, and before we make our simple DC motor, let's dive in, open this thing up, and see how it works. Before we open up that DC motor, let's go over the basics of how an electric motor works. An electric motor takes electrical energy and turns it into mechanical energy. It uses magnets and electromagnets to spin a rotor. Let's learn about electromagnets by making one. You're going to need some copper wire. You're going to need at least one battery, but you may want more to experiment with different voltages. And lastly, you'll need a nail or a screw made of iron. Take your copper wire and wind it around your iron nail. Now, every time you pass electricity through a conductor like wire, it creates a small magnetic field. And when you wind it up multiple times, like I'm doing here, you're multiplying the magnetic field, making it stronger. You can experiment with how many times you wind your wire around the nail or screw and see if it affects the strength of the magnet. This copper wire looks like it doesn't have an insulator over it, but it actually does. It's very thin and see-through. So you're going to have to take the insulator off so you can make an electrical connection with the battery. So just take a little bit of sandpaper and sand off each end of the wire. It's time to test your electromagnet. I like to test it with a bunch of metal paper clips. Attach one wire to the positive end of the battery and the other to the negative end of the battery. And then you can try picking up paper clips. Ooh, that's hot. Little safety warning, the copper wire and the battery might get a little hot, so you might want to insulate it with a little electrical tape so you don't burn yourself. That is much safer and you have officially made your first electromagnet. You can experiment with different size batteries and different voltage batteries. I found the D-cell to work better, probably because it can provide more current. Let's go over the parts of an electric motor using this animation before we open up the real thing. There are five basic parts of a DC motor. The first part are the brushes. The brushes make the electrical connection from the battery to our next part, which is called the commutator. The commutator is a circular conductor that passes electricity onto the armatures. Notice there are gaps in the commutator. That ensures that only one armature is getting electricity at a time. The next part are the armatures. In real life, these will be copper windings, which will make them electromagnets. Then you have the permanent magnets, which are part of the stator. The stator is the part of a motor that is stationary. Notice the permanent magnets have opposite polarity. Then you have the rotor, which is technically anything that is rotating inside of the motor, so the commutator and armatures would be part of the rotor. Then usually there's a metal rod that goes through the center that allows you to transfer the mechanical energy from inside of the motor to outside of the motor. When you connect the motor to electricity, the electricity will flow through the terminals, to the brushes and the brushes will pass the electricity onto the commutator and the commutator will turn on the armature windings which are the electromagnets. Because of the gaps in the commutator only one armature will be turned on at a time and that armature will be repelled away from the permanent magnet with the same polarity which causes the movement and rotor to spin. Let's see what these parts really look like and open up the DC motor. When you pull off the back you'll see the two brushes which are attached to two strips of copper that act as springs and push the brushes against the commutator and those strips of copper are attached to the terminals that the battery gets connected to. Then you can pull out the rotor which has the commutator and armatures with windings on them. Here is the commutator. You can see the gaps in the commutator. There are three armatures so that means there are three sections of commutator separated by a gap. Then there are the three armatures with the copper windings around them which make the electromagnets. You can see how the commutator fits in between the brushes and the brushes make contact with the commutator and as it spins, it passes electricity to one armature, then it gets to the gap and passes it to the next armature, gets to the gap and passes it to the next armature. And round and round it goes. Inside the casing of the motor, you can see the permanent curved magnets. They are opposite polarity, so one of them, north pole, is facing in, the other, south pole, is facing in. This part of the motor is called the stator, which means it is the stationary part of the motor. If you assemble the motor, except for the stator with the permanent magnets in it, you can attach it to a battery and test which armature is receiving electricity and thus turned into an electromagnet. If you spin the rotor, you'll notice that there's only one electromagnet charged at a time, and if you spin it, 
it'll be a different electromagnet, but in the same position. This is all thanks to the design of the commutator, which has gaps and is only providing electricity to one electromagnet at a time. The motor is reassembled, and if you attach a battery to the terminals, you can see it working in full force. One last thing about these brushed electric motors is that they are not polarized, which means you can attach positive voltage to either terminal and negative voltage to either terminal. If you change the positive and negative around, you just make it spin the opposite way. It's time to build your simple DC motor. This is the same motor I make in my show, Engineering Wonder. You're going to need two metal paper clips. You're going to need a D-cell battery. You are going to need copper wire. I'm using 24 gauge copper wire. And you will need a magnet. This is a round magnet with about 12.6 millimeter diameter and a five millimeter thickness. First, you're gonna take your paper clips and bend them to create a circle in the middle. Do this for both paper clips. Then take your D-cell battery and wind your copper wire around it, making a circle. Make sure you leave a few inches of wire protruding from your wind. We'll use this later for the motor. I wind the wire 15 times around the battery, but you can experiment with different number of winds and see how it affects your motor. Again, leave a few inches on the end before you cut it. Then slide off your coil from the battery and take the ends and wind it around your coil to secure the wires into place like this. Then grab your sandpaper to sand away the insulator on this wire so it can make an electrical connection with the paper clips. Before you start sanding though, here's an important note. You're gonna sand away the insulator completely on one end. On the other side, you are not going to completely sand away the insulator. You are only going to sand away half of the insulator on this wire. I do this by pinching the wire between my thumb and sandpaper and running it through my fingers a few times, and this will just take off half of the insulator off the wire. By doing this, it does the job of the commutator and turns off the electricity for half a turn. If the electricity doesn't get turned off for half a turn, it will just be in repel mode the entire time and your motor will be stuck. But because the electricity is turned off for half a turn, the momentum will carry it through that half turn until it's being repelled again by the magnet. It's time to assemble your DC motor. Attach a paper clip with some tape to the negative terminal of the battery, then attach the other paper clip to the positive end of the battery. Then place your magnet right in the middle of the paper clips on your battery. Then thread the ends of your copper winding through the circles you made in the paper clips and give it a little push and see your motor in action. These little motors are so cool, it looks like a magic trick. They can get going pretty fast. If you're having trouble with yours, make sure you sanded it properly and make sure the coil is just above the magnet so it has maximum repel power. And that is how you make the exact same DC motor I make in my show, Engineering Wonder. I hope you give it a shot. Here are some questions to consider and maybe even experiment with. How would changing the size of the magnet or strength of the magnet affect the motor? How do batteries with different voltages affect the motor? Could you design a simple motor around a nine volt battery and how would it affect the motor? Could you design a simple motor around two AA batteries in series to create three volts of power and how would that affect the motor? How does the number of times you wind the wire affect the motor? Could you construct a simple machine with this motor to do something useful? I hope everyone had fun building this motor and experimenting, and I will see you in the next project.